Admit it, this is pretty cool. Where are we going? The future, boys. Glorious future. Boom! Gotcha. Oh. I need to get something done, you know what I mean? I'm so excited I could just scream! Welcome. Welcome, everyone. I hope you can all can see the screen. Thumbs up if you can see. Anne Marie, Cynthia. Cool. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are really excited to uh, welcome you all to our second virtual Young Women in Technology workshop. I'm Pooja Patil. I'm an engineering program manager leading cloud portfolios and serving as a co-chair. Along with me, we have Anne-Marie, who is a principal content architect, and as well as a co-chair for this awesome event. Along with both of us, we have our great team that has worked really hard to put together this great event for you guys. Keeping in mind the time zone difference, we have organized this event across two days. The content will be the same on both the days. So September 29th is for East Coast and September 30th is for the West Coast. So look into the sessions, look into the schedule that works best for you guys and feel free to join. Once you're registered, you have access to both the days and feel free to come in even on uh, next day if you've already attended and if you like a session, feel free to participate again. With that said, let's get on. NetApp thrives on diversity. NetApp supports and encourages with initiatives. As you can see, we have 19 with chapters that are spread across the world with around 1300 active members. And this is just of 2020. So we have more uh, WIT events coming up across the world that NetApp supports. Among the different WIT initiatives that each of these different WIT chapter organizes, Young Women in Technology stands out. As we have the privilege and the enthusiasm and the excitement to inspire young women like you to pursue an education and career in STEM related fields. We are just playing a small role in closing this gender gap that we see in the STEM related fields. So let's start with some game to understand what STEM really is. Okay. Let's start with the first question. So most of you got a chance to see the DreamWorks animation video that was being played at the start of this event. So with that as a frame of reference, what do you think? Is this the uh, video that you just saw related to STEM field? I'll keep the poll open for another five seconds and then we can close. Okay, I see answers are coming in. Give another second. Okay, the poll is going to end in a second. And the poll, share the results. Woo, all of you got it right. Awesome. You all are pretty awake. It's already nine in the morning. Cool. Let's start with the second poll. Okay. So how many fields do you guys think are involved to make this kind of an animation video? Okay, answers are coming in. Wait for another second. Okay, we'll be closing the poll. There you go. Not bad. Most of you got it right. Yes. Any kind of animation video requires more than one expert or one subject matter expertise. 
right? It involves computer science, graphic design, uh, illustrator, visual art specialist, a lot of thing goes into making this kind of animation video. And that's what this whole STEM program is rated about. Okay, let's go with the next poll. Okay, so where do you think this animation videos or animation subjects are being used? Okay, waiting for a second before closing the poll. Okay, I'll end the poll. Show the results. That's right. These kind of animation videos can be used across all industries to help visualize or provide some information that's not easily available or acceptable in 2D format, right? It helps to provide more in-depth information on how the simulation works. So let's go with the last poll that we have today. So we have seen on one side what it means to have an animation video, what it means to have uh, the different kinds of fields, right? But coming to the other aspect, theory is one. But when you start developing some of these cool ideas, what it really takes to develop a good product. Okay, waiting for another second before closing the polls. All if you got this right. It's just not the theory, the technical aspect, but it's also about having collaborative effort with a different set of people who are having different views in solving a problem and working together as a team to develop these products. Okay, that ends our poll for today. Okay. So coming back to what we just saw in this such a small game that we just played, that each and every person has their own unique set of talents and skills. So the aim of this quiet event is to ensure that each and every one of you can pick up a field that you're passionate about. Believe in yourself, collaborate with as diverse uh, people as possible who have different views, think out of a box and work together in building cool innovative products and be a producer of some new apps, technology, whatever, right? Our opportunities are endless rather than just being a consumer of, okay, you really know this, we're just going to follow that. Think broad, think ahead, be creative and be innovative. So with that in mind, the YWIT team at NetApp has worked together in putting together a fun, interactive, a hands-on workshop for you all, right? So the first thing that you need to do is go into netapp.yWIT.io agenda. Let me bring up the website up here. So once you go into this specific URL, right? This is the agenda tab. There are three different tracks. And as we just mentioned, the same content is presented on September 29th and September 30th. So you can select, go through each of these tracks, select any session that you're interested in. Say you're interested in track two, virtual escape room, right? So the next step that you need to do, uh, let me bring, okay. All of you would have got an email with the respective workshops and their uh, the Zoom webinar link, right? Say you're interested in virtual escape room. This is a day when schedule, go through the list and find where your virtual escape room is. So virtual escape room is on track two and we have a webinar up here. So copy paste this webinar link into your browser and you'll be able to log into that specific website, okay? Coming back, if you have any questions throughout the day or even after the event, feel free to email us. And we have a group of people who are ready to answer these questions as soon as possible. So you don't have to wait for a long time, okay? After the event, we all are looking forward to hearing back from you on what you enjoyed, what did you like, what did you learn, and what suggestions do you have for us to make this event even more better for you next time. And if you would look, like to win a Why With Swag, please feel free to share us a feedback form. The feedback form will be sent to you with the same email that you registered for. 
Up next, we have awesome keynote speakers who will be sharing their interests and their journey and the passion for what with initiatives that they are doing. So stay tuned for the keynote speakers. So we hope that today's event well, you know, provides you some innovative ways to think about problems, think about careers that you can approach instead, be creative and have a collaborative effort. So stay tuned for the keynote speaker. Up next, we have our co-chair, Anne-Marie, introducing our first keynote speaker. Anne-Marie, up to you. Thanks, Pooja. So welcome again to the YWIT 22 event. We're so excited that you're here. You're here with many other women from across the US. Today, Thursday is the US East Coast, and then tomorrow, Friday is the US West Coast. I'm Anne Marie Grassino, I'm Principal Information Architect at NetApp. What does that mean? Well, I'm like an architect who um, designs a building, but instead of a building, I design information about different software products, how they're going to be, um, how the information is going to be organized and presented to NetApp customers. I started out as a technical writer, but in writing about technical information. If you like puzzles and writing, which I do, this is a great career. I have the honor of introducing our first keynote speaker, Dr. Katherine Jordan, or Dr. Kat, as she likes to be called. Can you advance this slide, Pooja? Thank you. So Dr. Kat, she is a senior program manager with Fidelity Investments. She works with executive leadership and she improves the way things work at Fidelity. So if she doesn't, um, if, if something isn't right, what she does is she steps in to figure out what the issue is and then helps redesign that process. She's a professor in the computer information engineering uh, department at St. Augustine's University in Raleigh. She has over 20 years of experience in process improvement in many industries. She holds three degrees in industrial and systems engineering from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, including a doctoral degree with a concentration in human factors and usability analysis. She's active in the STEM programs of Chick Tech and Black Girls Code in Durham, North Carolina. She also volunteers with Stress for Success and Girl Scouts of America. You can follow her on her Twitter and Instagram accounts. And as Pooja said, if you do have questions, feel free to type the questions in the Zoom chat during the sessions. Only hosts and speakers will be able to see those questions in the chat and we'll do our best to respond during the workshops today. Or you can email us, as Pooja showed the email, you can email us during the workshops, during the days, or even after the event. So feel free to reach us with this email address and just include the session name on your question and we will get back to you. I can't wait to hear what Dr. Kat has and how she, was, how she got to be so successful. So stay on this webinar um, to hear Dr. Kat, and we will take a few minutes break to, um, before we start with Dr. Kat. Thanks, Pooja. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Kat. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I, I couldn't hear anything earlier, but thank you. Yeah. No problem. Okay, we are all ready to start. Uh, are you good with sharing your screen? Perfect, yeah. We can see your screen. That's the wrong one. I'm sorry. Okay. What screen is that? Share screen. Screen two. Okay. Yep. Good. We can see the screen. Perfect. Okay. 
we can get started uh, when you're ready. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Um, thank you again, NetApp, for this opportunity. And thank you for all that were able to join. Um, today, I want to talk about reels versus real. What is engineering all about? Um, and for those who don't recognize that icon, don't worry, by the end of this, you will. Um, and for those who are very familiar with this, hopefully this presentation will resonate with you very well. Um, so just to get everybody on the same level, or at least remotely the same playing field, reels are those little things you see in Instagram, mainly TikTok. They can be anywhere from 15 to 90 seconds. Very early during the pandemic, I myself was guilty of trying to do the dances very poorly, I might add. Um, they're fun. You can add so songs or different sounds to them. Um, reels are definitely different than stories or posts because they're said to have this immersive element. They're supposed to bring people in. Um, on the back end, you're also able to be discovered by people that typically don't follow you. So if you're talking about brand recognition or those type of things, reels are typically the way to go. So if you think of those icons, TikTok, Facebook now has a platform, um, Snapchat calls their spotlight, reels are definitely very, very common now. Um, so what's that have to do with engineering, right? Um, the reason I think is very important is because of this phenomenon I recently heard about is the media triangle. Um, and I think the true meaning of what engineering is and how it's been displayed at times is just not accurate. And I want to kind of shake that up a little bit, um, but at the same time, make it very welcoming and inviting um, to you all, because that's what I would love for you all to just learn more about it and, and not have some of the pitfalls I had. So today is about the real, real. So what's our lineup? Hashtag no filter. I will give an introduction, give you a little background about who I am. We'll talk about engineering. I'm pretty sure if you're on a, a platform like this, you have some idea, but we're going to talk about what it is to me. Um, at a time like this, we're going to share why it is so important, why it's so important. And last but not least, is it possible? Um, there's a lot of things, especially in our society now, that are very important, very critical, but a lot of people just feel, I don't know, it's just, it's not for me, it's not feasible. Now, these four gentlemen, um, or what I thought engineering was when I was around the average age of the audience today, not including any of the other speakers or uh, professionals or teachers. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. So again, we're going to go through introductions. What is engineering? Why is it important? And is it something that's even possible? So who am I? I am Dr. Cat. Catherine Jordan. Before then, it was just Kat. Um, my background, or if you looked at my profile, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm from a really small town. If anybody recognizes 252, we're here. Um, those years represent my school and my sorority. Um, I'm currently at Fidelity Investments. I'm on the data science side and program management. It's a really cool job and a really busy time. Don't look at the side. Um, I'm also an adjunct professor. Enjoy uh, teaching. Um, I teach microcomputer applications as well as project management. Some of the pictures, I've had lots of jobs. My dad retired from Firestone, Bridgestone. Um, he worked, I want to say, 35 years. And he told me at 27, I think I had more jobs than he ever had in his whole life. And I tried to explain to him, we're just not wired the same. We're just not wired the same. Um, so the air at the bottom, anything from manufacturing to research to healthcare, I'm now in financial services. 
all with the same major, industrial systems engineering. But I can assure you at the time of, of your age, had no idea what an industrial systems engineer is. In fact, if you quiz half of my family, husband included, he would know what an industrial engineer is. So hopefully once we finish this workshop, you'll know more about it. Um, but it's around excellence. Um, I was very proud to get my doctorate first in my family. Uh, the picture at the top, our organization partnered with Black Girls Code. So I was super happy to introduce my daughter at five to Roblox. Had no idea what that was. She was actually a lot better at the game than me. So keeping Cope alive there. Um, the picture in the middle, I worked at Honda Jet and we all wore white uniforms. That was one of the times um, when everyone thought I worked on cars, which was very, very, rung very true to how people felt about engineering overall. And working in healthcare um, was very interesting, especially around the pandemic era because there were no breaks. Um, so it was just very, um, an interesting time to be in the space but again, all based on the same major, lots and lots of different opportunities. So that's what I really want to share. That's the real behind it. So a lot of people, when you talk about engineers, they're like, oh, you must have been super great in math. Were you like the valedictorian? The answer is no and no. Was good in math. I was not the best. I, 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 did, I did work really hard. But to answer that question, what did I want to be? when I grew up? Well, my generation, I don't know what little black girl didn't wanna be Lisa Turtle. I'm not sure how that would have been a profession, but she seemed to have a nice life. She had lots of hats. She went shopping a lot. She went to nice restaurants. I, I guess I would say that was nice. We didn't go out to eat a lot. So I, Lisa Turtle was the first one. I just remember saying I wanted to be Lisa Turtle. Now, Whitney Houston, not per se Whitney, but I thought I wanted to be a singer. That is one of the things where you want it, but maybe the talents don't align with that, but I wanted to be a singer. Um, similarly, I thought I was gonna be in the WNBA. Um, I am taller than the average female. However, definitely not tall enough for the WNBA. That dream ended right after high school. Um, I did want to be a news anchor at one point in time, um, specifically a weather person, because I somehow thought it was really cool to know the weather before anyone else. Um, yeah, uh, that, that just seemed very cool to me. Like, I'm the one that has the umbrella. You didn't know you needed it. Ha, ha, ha. I don't know. Um, and then on top, Claire Huxtable from the Cosby Show. Of course, I wanted to be Claire. She was a lawyer. She was a mom. She did all of these things so well. Um, and it was fiction. So again, not necessarily engineering anywhere in there. Um, again, gleaning from the images that I saw as a child, which again, I go back to the purpose of the real. You know, think about that. You all see so many images every day, whether it's reality TV, whether it's TikTok, any type of social media, chats, all kinds of images and information is inundating through you at one time. Um, so there's all kinds of things that may pique your interest of what you can be, what you want to be. So therefore, it's, it's so important to kind of hone into center of truth. So how did you go from Lisa Turtle to Whitney Houston to the weather woman to Claire to a basketball player to an engineer? I'm glad you asked. Well, I was from Wilson, North Carolina, or Bailey, North Carolina. And around junior year, junior, senior year, we took a college aptitude test. It was, was not the SAT. It was not ACT. It was more of a um, I guess indicator would be the best way, some type of aptitude test. And it aligned you to different professions. And when I finished my test, it said, Catherine, you would be a great engineer. And I remember just looking at my paper, like, 
wow, I wonder, I, I, I wonder if they messed it up because I, I don't even know what an engineer is. I, what, what does that even mean? I, I've never even heard the term. I, I don't like engines. What, what does that mean? Did, did I perform poorly? Um, I, was, I was very confused. Now, if we go back to the four blocks, the few times I've thought of an engineer, this, this is what I thought. I thought of a man, typically a white man, in a hard hat with some form of safety glasses. Um, later that evolved to an image of a man in a hoodie with very long hair drinking Starbucks. Um, it also morphed to an older man with a pocket protector of some sort. Now, the last one may seem vain. However, in my time around when I took this test, hair was a big deal. Now, I'm not going to say my hair was that high, but at times it could have been. That's definitely not going to fit under a hard hat. It's not um, at all. And that, that was very concerning to me because, again, these are the things that I'm concerned about at, at that age and at that time. I had no idea. I remember thinking, what a horrible life I'm about to have because they're going to put me on a train. I can't be safe. I can't put the, the hard hat on my head. I don't look great in pinstripes. This is just a bad life. I, I was very upset about what this meant. And some people might say, well, if you performed well enough to be an engineer, surely you could have looked it up and, you know, talk to some people. Um, but I would question who I, I, I didn't I didn't know anyone in my area that looked like me that I would feel comfortable um, asking those questions. But to the, the earlier point, I did look it up. So when you look at these definitions, what is engineering? When I look at this first one, and it's early, and so I'm gonna try not to yawn, to be honest. It's a discipline of applying technical and scientific knowledge and physical resources to design and produce materials, structures, machines, devices, systems, and processes that meet a desired objective under specified criteria. If you don't have people running at the line after that, like Black Friday, I don't know what, what's gonna happen, sarcastically. The next one I saw quite often, engineers about using scientific principles to create structures and machines, again, machines. Examples include bridges, pharmaceuticals, vehicles, airplanes, factory machines, building roads, robots, and tunnels. It is the application of mathematics and science to solve problems. Would you want to be an engineer just by that definition? Yep, I, not me. It, did, it, didn't, it didn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. That's why I thought these were the options of engineering. I thought of people that worked in dungeons or people that again were on trains or elderly people that just looked at screens. I, I had no concept of the fabulous people you're gonna meet during this, these two days people you've already met or people you may know in your family. Uh, I was coming from an environment where I, I, I just, I simply didn't know. So similar to social media, and I remember early in the pandemic, there was this challenge of what I ordered versus what I got, which is one of my favorite things. I, I love that. I love that. It's one of my favorite things. Another one that first came, uh, another one that trends not as, as frequently is no filter, right? So they show one where you have this filter and the person's all dolled up, they look amazing. Then when they take it off, they just look like a normal person. You're like, oh my goodness. Um, so that's what I kind of did. So I, I want you to think back to the example I just showed and you be honest with yourself. Is that what I want to go to school for that? Is, is, that, is that what I want to do? 
versus this definition of engineer, which is a really interesting thing because I like to I like to find information. Did you know the word engineer has nothing to do with the word engine? I mean, that alone, I think we could drop the mic. I had no, no idea. No, no one ever said that. Um, when we talk about words and those who are bilingual, I think often share how difficult and convoluted and nonsensical at times the English language is. And I think this is a prime example. Engineer did not originate an engine. The word came from ingenium, which is a Latin word meaning ingenious. <sighs> who would not want a position called ingenious? Someone who solves problems that elude normal people. Oh my God, you want me to be a superhero. If my paper said, Catherine, you're gonna, you would be a great superhero. I would have asked, where can I purchase my cake? That is not where my brain evolved to because I was thinking of mathematical structures and how I was gonna fit that under my hair. Um, the second one really digs into it. Engineers are problem solvers. We definitely have to have the math and science, but why? We're not just going on math quizzes and, and, and trivia. We're using it to solve problems. We create inventions, new ideas. We work with teams. We work with people. That was a big myth. I was like, oh my goodness. I'm going to be the only one in a room by myself. That, that's awful. I talk too much for that. We monitor projects. We make sure things are on track. That is something I'm very involved with in my current position, making sure the unknown doesn't affect the known. For example, Ian, Hurricane Ian, how is that affecting our vendors? In addition to how does that affect our, our friends and in family in, in Florida. Are they okay? Were they able to evacuate? Do they need to evacuate? Will they be out? What, what, how, how can we, how do, how do you think about those things? And engagement with others, that could be customers, that could be people you wanna use a product, that could be um, other partners, business stakeholders, or people who are very important about whatever you're trying to build. These are what engineers do. Engineers are highly respected individuals because of their knowledge. They're really smart people. So if we go back to that other slide, yes, there's a lot of science, there's math. They have to have an understanding of pattern recognition at times, depending on what discipline they have. So there is a lot of respect around it because it is a disciplined practice. But the one that just resonates for me is it's they work hard to make the world around them a better place to live for themselves and for others. If that's not a feel good, just hug yourself. I, I don't know what it is. Now, would you want to be an in engineer by that definition? I would, because that makes me think of Charlie's Angels. That makes me think of I'm going on a mission. The other thing I wanted to be was James Bond, but not a man. I didn't, I don't know if we had a woman at James Bond, but I thought that would have been cool. So that makes me think of engineering. It definitely makes me think of Wakanda forever. I think of Shuri and all of her inventions. She definitely was way ahead of the curve there. And I also think of Game of Thrones of Khaleesi, not necessarily, but engineering, but definitely problem solving with the dragons that, that, Teamwork, we'll talk about that later. That's a really big thing. So when you talk about filter versus non-filter, real versus real, the reality is engineers are problem solvers. The math and the science you hear about and all those subjects you have to learn, those are the tools to make your job easier as an engineer. And there's so many disciplines that continue to grow and um, evolve over time because of the problems. Problems, unfortunately, are not going to go anywhere. I think I could pan the entire audience and there would be 
uh, limited problems that an engineer could, so could solve at any given time. So our first poll is around why does engineering even matter? So I get it, it's not this boring, we're gonna fall asleep every day at work, but why does it matter? So if I could get the poll around, what is your dominant hand? Or what is your hand preference? Left hand, right hand, or both? Okay, I think we have received most of the answers up here. Okay. We'll be ending in a second. Okay. There you go, the results are shared. Wow, there are definitely more lefties in the room and wow, one ambidextrous person. Okay, so 73% are right-handed, 20% is left-handed, and seven that that one that seven percent is both. Thank you for participating. So speaking to my lefties, when you want to talk about why something is important or why it matters, as a left-handed person, we in the whole population, we I'm a lefty, represent roughly 10 to 12% of the population. So what does that mean, really? So that means roughly 90% aren't like you. Meaning when things are designed, they might not think about you unless you're in the room to design. Three things that come to mind, the college tabletop desk. And, and some students may have this in their high schools. My high school did not have this desk. It was not made for left-handed people. <laughs> you literally turn the other way around to have any kind of real estate to write on anything. It was like, this was not made for someone left-handed. Those torture devices in the middle, scissors. Oh, scissors. For left-handed people, um, it's, it's just a prank at this point. Now, there are left-handed scissors now, but primarily those were not, the handles are made for right-handed people. And this poor person trying to keep notes in one of those binders. Yeah, if you're left-handed, your hand is going to be all on the binder. You're gonna have that little indention mark. And most notebooks are that way. If you're writing, you when you lift your hand, you have ink all on your hand because you just weren't thought about in the design. Um, you think about some handles, some coffee cups um, where I've gotten where there's like little unicorns. Unicorn pokes me because it wasn't made for me to hold that way. Um, and again, it's, it's not intentional. You think about the room and people that are making products, right? If 90% of something or someone could buy my product, someone may say, I, I don't really care about the 10%. They, they can adjust, they can adjust. That's one school of thought. Second school of thought is because there was no one in the room that thought with that lens, they didn't know, they didn't know. And your, your dominant hand is one thing, but there's certainly other demographics that you think about as well. Obviously we're here, gender comes into play. I often think about race, ethnicity, language, um, your ableness is, is one. Um, so your vision, your auditory levels, all of those things. Um, if there's not someone there 
that can relate to that space or can think through that, you could be left with the metaphorical left-handed scissors just because you're not thought about at the table. Just think about that. So next, next one, sticking in demographics matter or variables or things that make you different. Like I said, so that could be me, I'm left-handed, race, we're, now we're talking about gender. What percent of women, according to 2021 statistics, are engineers? While the polls are up, uh, Dr. Kaya, just a time check. Uh, yep. We will be completing the ability to have the keynote ended by 10.30, so the kids have a few minutes break. And we would like to go over the Zoom link and sessions once again with the kids. Okay, so about 10.30? Yes, please. Oh, yep, absolutely. Okay, uh, giving a second for the kids to answer. I see most of the kids have participated. Let me okay. the poll. There you go, the results. Oh, so this one's on the over the board. So 20% says 10%. Over half of you at 53 said 15%. Um, almost 25 said 25%. No one thought 30%. So over half was correct. It is 15%. So that's like one and a half out of, out of 10. Still a pretty small number. Pretty small number. So why does that matter? similar to the left hand. So, so the, the figure I have in the corner is around design. Now, this has been a big change. Hopefully, it's been a, a topic of still, still com common discussion where a lot of our um, design, especially automotive, some healthcare, which is frightening, has been based on the body composition of an average male who is 5'9", 197.9 pounds. So the average female is 170 pounds, 5'4". Where that has been awful, has been noted with the crash test dummies that women were actually 47% more likely, almost half, right, um, to get injured just because of the design. Airbags also were more um, seriously impactful to us um, because our body near our chest is different than men. Um, and the design did not accommodate for that. Uh, the picture in the middle is what's called the woman womanikin. It's the female version of the mannequin uh, because there were actual studies shown that people were hesitant giving CPR because of women's extremities. They didn't feel comfortable. So they wanted in healthcare practices to allow people to use what was actually simulated as a person, who knew? The picture up top is one you could Google, it's, the, it's called the racist soap dispenser. Um, this sensor design did not detect certain hints of melanin. So someone my complexion could stick their hand under and no soap would come out. So that's why it's important in terms of testing, in terms of design and concept to have diverse audiences there. Um, marketing and engineers play a great part together. So the picture at the bottom was one of a UK Dove commercial um, that started with a black woman in a brown shirt. It then she then used Dove. Then when she took the shirt off, she was seen as a white woman without the shirt on. That was just a miss. That is one thing that Dove took a really big hit on. 
Um, and if you look now, they have a much more diverse representation. And I'm pretty sure that someone said, how, how did you miss that? How did you miss that? Other things that you will have to tackle are age, is your age. There are different stereotypes and thoughts around just your age. There will be people that may not take you seriously because they're like, oh, they just want to take selfies. They just want to, they just want to do videos. They don't, they don't care. They're not serious about anything. And these are things that you want to be at the table to make sure you have a voice. The other thing is the assumption that you understand all things tech. Oh, they get it. They're born here. They, I mean, they grew up with laptops. They grew up with tablets in their hands. That may or may not be true. And if that's the, uh-oh, if that's the um, image you, you have, or that's what you reckon, if, if that's the demographic you are, you just want to make sure that you are represented at the table. So that's why that is so, so, so very important. So I highlighted on it a little earlier, slide, is engineers work in teams. We don't work alone. That column on my right, you see there's different types of teams. The one at the bottom and all the blue is what we're trying our best to stay away from. It is bad, bad, bad <laughs> when you see the same types of people in a team. You'll see some people, they only recruit from the same schools. Most people live in the same neighborhood. They go to the same church. They have the same, same, same. It's, it's almost predictable. It, it becomes a sitcom at, the, at that point. Then you do see the token team every now and then. There's one, one, one person that's different. Not sure how much change they're gonna make, but there, there's, there's one and they typically are just there for face value. It, it's very hard to shift that many people when, when you're by yourself. What you want is that group on top. Diversity matters. And it, it's so much more than women. We're all different. I'm sure you have friends that you're not like them, of course, just because they're a girl. They could be your neighbor. You could have the same story and you know, you're not the same. So just think about that. If you're someone that's different, that just remember that's probably one of the reasons you deserve to be in the room. You, you, you deserve to be there. So our next poll, which skills or subjects are the top two traits for engineers? This is according to NACI, recently um, uh, released. Math and science, problem solving and communication. Which do you think? Guys are pretty good. Okay, I see most of the kids have answered. Okay. The the poll. There you go. Oh, close. Okay. So over half 60 problem solving and communication. That's it. It's problem solving and communication. So not to be confused that math and science are important. I don't want anyone to leave and say, Dr. Cat said, I don't have to pay any attention to that. I'm gonna solve problems and communicate. Don't say that. I will deny, deny, deny. However, the top traits are problem solving and communication. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but have you ever been around someone so smart? You ask them a very basic question, very basic question, and 15 minutes later, you're still confused. Like, what just happened? That's why communication is important. You have to marry them both because you have to be able to communicate to people that are different than you. We just talked about a whole range of how we're different. People are different. You have to meet people where they are. You have to make it make sense to them. 
And the problem solving, like I said, we are all superheroes. We now have replaced the engineer. We're on our real engineers or superheroes. They have to know how to solve problems. And I wish on as many jobs as I've had that I could have really pulled out that quadratic equation and said, boom, here's your answer. Nope, it does not work that way. You're gonna have to take the math and science you've learned and other applications to be able to answer and solve these problems. So very good, thank you for participating. So we talked about it, right? So we know engineering is important. We know if we're not at the table, we have to, people, other people can design for us without us being in a room, which can be problematic, even deadly to, to us. So everybody's gonna just go to school and make it work, right? Like, great. So as I said in the beginning, I'm gonna be very honest with everyone. It was not like the television show. So again, I'm coming from my vision. I loved A Different World. That was my favorite television show. It was a spinoff of the Cosby's. I'm in the same theme. I wanted to be Felicia Rashad, Claire Hostable. It was an HBCU or a historically black college and university. I didn't know that at the time. I just saw people that seemed very happy. They all looked alike and they worked really hard together and they had fun. And 30 minutes later, any problem they had was solved. That was not how college started for me. And I, and I, and I wasn't prepared. I, I wasn't prepared for that shift. So I was always, you can see the picture in the middle, the only girl, middle child, you name it. Um, we had normal issues that other people had. So my, my family, my parents divorced, which was super, super hard. There was a period in time where our house actually burned down, which was insane. That was, in my mind, it was the worst thing could ever happen, right? Um, and, it, and it, it, was, it was difficult, but I was always a smart kid. Never had any issues with school. Always honor student, honor society, really, really smart. I got to college. I went to the historically black college. In my mind, because there, were more, there was much more diversity in this school than my high school, this was going to be great because people weren't really nice to me in high school. Um, and some of it I felt was race. Some of it, I don't know. As I gotten older, I recognized their issues had nothing to do with me. Sometimes people, when they have certain issues, those are their issues. They really, it's really not them. And I, and I, and I believe that to this day. So I get to the school and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. You know, we're all family and our mind is, you know, we're going to work together. I get to my first engineering class. Um, it's engineering graphics. Again, very small high school coming from. We did not have platforms like this. Of course, my child is in Roblox at five. I never, I've never done any program or anything like this. There's only two females in a class, myself included, class of probably 70-ish or so. Um, and I hear several people saying, oh my God, this class is a cakewalk. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be so easy. And I am petrified because I have no idea what they're talking about. We open the book, they're talking about AutoCAD, they're talking about drafting 3D and you know when you want to cry and you feel that lump warm up in your throat, like, well, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. So, I'm, yeah, I'm still trying to be positive, looking around, trying to hold it together, but I'm confused. I'm so confused. Um, get the first assignments. I'm going to the office hours because, again, I'm the smart kid. I, I'm the smart kid, right? I'm, I'm going to office hours. I'm going to tutoring. I get my first exam. I failed. I, I don't know a time I think I have ever cried that hard. My roommate thought someone died. Like I was bald and we could not have been more different people. I'm bald up crying because I was like, I'm a loser. I failed. 
maybe I'm only smart in Eastern North Carolina. Maybe I'm not smart, like engineering smart. And, and I'm sure I'm not the only person that has done that. Like we classify levels of intelligence and we base levels of intelligence on the silliest things. It was one test. And I was mortified. And I like to say I studied, I pulled myself up and I, the next test I passed, but the next test I didn't pass again. So at this point, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm studying, I'm doing the examples, I'm talking to the professor, who by the way, is a man from Korea, who I'm still very good friends with now, who had the strongest accent. We both argue back and forth on who has the stronger accent. I'm gonna say his was stronger than mine. So there was a language little barrier. This, this kid at 17, is trying to understand what, what's happening. And I, I felt like I had made a mistake. And I put this pressure on myself that, oh, my family's gonna be devastated. Nobody understands. So I had never gone to an advisor um, in school, would be the same as like a guidance counselor. I, I, I never done that, but you know, some would say, oh, you had a hunch. I would say it was divine intervention. Go to your guidance counselor. And I go to my guidance counselor advisor in college. And I said, I think I need to change my major. And she said, well, why do you need to change your major? And I said, oh, I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm not. And I remember very vividly saying, I'm not engineering smart. She said, oh, well, what kind of smart are you? I said, oh, I, oh, I, I, I haven't figured out what kind of smart, but I'm not engineering smart. She said, okay. She said, well, how were your grades? And I said, yeah, this is one class. I don't understand. And I keep trying. And I just keep, I mess up every, I failed two times and it's just not going to work. So we went through the syllabus and um, this, this is my knowledge. I didn't recognize that she was an engineer. I just I just thought she was an advisor. I, I, had, I hadn't put it together. I, I didn't put it together. And she said, um, how many women are in that class? I said, it's just me and another girl. She said, do you know her name? I said, no. She said, okay. She said, well, how hard are you studying? I was like, oh man, I'm studying so hard. I'm studying way hard than I'm studying in high school. She said, well, did you study in high school? I said, no, not really. She said, okay. So maybe we can study a little bit more. So, okay. She said, the other young lady, you should introduce yourself. She said, I happen to advise her as well. And she was having some problems and she has an interesting way of looking at it. So maybe you should talk to her. I said, okay. So I reached out to her and I told her the story. I was like, yeah, I was thinking of changing my major. My advisor told me to try again. I want to try. She told me that you you were going through some of the same things. So please, if I'm off, let me know. Cause I didn't want to bother anybody, you know, because I've already made the decision because I'm the smart one. I'm not going to stay in a position where I'm not. I'm the smart one. And she said, Oh, I can help you. You should have told me earlier. I've been looking for somebody to study with. Because backstory, the guys weren't studying with us. Nope. They either already took class, like I said, they thought it was easy and they studied to themselves. Um, that young lady and I are still friends to this day. I am proud to say I did get an A out of that class only because the professor dropped two of the, two of the lowest grades and those were definitely my lowest grades. Um, but why, why is that important? It's important because as you get higher, and right now you might be in one grade, you're going to the next grade. Some of you may be on your way to college. The levels change, even at work. The next level is not the last level. And, and sometimes you don't even know what you need to know. And that is the importance of community. So as I, as I mentioned in the beginning, I thought I was studying really, really hard. No, not really, not for what was required. 
And I hadn't even really asked for help. I did go to the tutor, but I didn't even connect with someone that was right in the class. Now, later in that class, I'd add, there were some guys that were open and they were nice. So I couldn't lump all of them together. And they opened up and we became this little network and we worked really closely together. Because as I said, engineers work in teams. And there were strengths that I brought to that class and other classes. And we found a way to work through it. So me being from a humble beginning in a less affluent school that didn't have the resources as others had nothing to do with it. Um, being the only person in, in college in my family and not having some of the resources that other people had, nothing to do with it. It, it really did become with finding that community. But unfortunately, some women don't find the community, which brings me to this next poll. What percentage of women that have an interest in STEM as a freshman no longer are interested in STEM by graduation? What do you think? 20%, 80%, 60%, or 40%? Okay, while the kids are answering that, Dr. Kat, we have mm -hmm. a question for you in the chat. Yep. yep. Yeah, uh, are you able to see the chat? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I do see one. For the chat. Okay, I can read the uh, question for you. Okay. Um, I would like, so one of the uh, attendees have a question out here asking, I would like to ask, why are we so focused on a mix of cultures, races, and genders? Shouldn't it be who's more suited for this position? Wouldn't it be better for the job or community to hire someone with most experience? If you were to hire an artist, would you want someone to be of a different race, but couldn't paint or a professional painter or I do understand wanting variety, but why is that the focus? That's a great question. And the reason I focus on race and gender and other demographics overall is because if it were truly an equal and equitable playing field, then the person with the most talent and the best artist in that example would be hired. But as a person with over five or six years in HR experience, I know oftentimes people that are hired, we hire people like ourselves. And when we look at the majority, they definitely don't look like me and they don't look like a lot of the boxes I see here. So that's the reason for programs that focus on culture, gender, um, to give those people the same opportunity. And I would say within the question, one thing to be mindful is that those aren't mutually exclusive. My thought process is there's certainly women, men, trans, whatever the notion that certainly are the best candidate but these platforms exist because there is certainly empirical evidence that they're not even getting at the table to be considered. So it's important for people to know that because this has happened and we're trying to do un we're trying to undo centuries of practices of where I hired the people that look like me and the people that I like and I know they're going to have to be develop a resiliency for when they're the only one. So the focus is on that small percentage because if they can matriculate, they'll probably be the only one. So it's not to negate others, it's not to say they're not suitable for the position or take away from the majority population. We certainly still need male engineers and we certainly still need 
the majority race wherever they fall. We're just trying to undo some practices that we know have been detrimental, hence the practices of airbags that injure women and, and other issues. Thank you, Dr. Gatt. You're and welcome. We are done with the poll. Let me end it. Okay. Share our results. Okay. So almost half of you thought 80%, a few 20%, almost 30% said 60, which it is. That's what it is. Almost 60% of women start as freshmen in STEM and then leave because they're no longer interested. Not the calculus is too hard. Not that they couldn't get through engineering graphics because they couldn't understand spatial recognition. They're no longer interested. And typically those research, um, once we dig deeper, is they felt like they just didn't have a sense of belonging, which goes back to the question I was just answering. I want to make sure that I, I have the confidence that you all have the aptitude to do the work. It is the mental or hidden hashtags that you have that slow you down. For me, I had insecurities. I thought I was odd. I still think I'm odd. The double minority. I had a lot of friends that did not go to public school. I did not feel like I did. I, I, I just didn't feel like I belonged. And in so many of those situations, including academia, those differences made me very unique and very appealing and competent in my work because you are definitely more than what you can produce. Those were my hidden hashtags. Those were the things that the filters pushed out. So that's important. I'd like to say we need you more now than ever, just from the perspective you all offer. We're in a global pandemic, off and on, depending on who, whose side of, of the table you're on. There are academic changes. There are people saying, hey, we should never go back in a building ever again. We've solved homelessness. Take the schools and just put everyone in it. There's others that are like, hey, I don't know what that's about. Let's go back. There's still substance abuse. Uh, they say it's a bigger prevalence in your generation just because uh, children have been um, placed on different medications earlier, and they say there's some type of addiction that, that's different. Technological dependency is a big one. They say you all are addicted, whole, whole different ball game. Mental wellness and bullying, totally different. Just because of the cyber bullying element that can take place. But you think of Amazon Prime. Oh, today, I love it. Someone had to think that through to think about how amazing that would be. Think about how commerce has changed. Now, if it's just too rainy, people Instacart. That was a thing of the past. That was something we never did. Now, I've flown recently and I've not seen anyone in this bubble that I see the gentleman here in the bottom, but some people do it. But I love seeing the mass that for our um, auditory impaired population to be able to see the mouth when moving, like someone had to think that through. So as I said before, debunk about this whole engineer, we, we're superheroes, right? So the problems will continue to come. So definitely think it through. So as I close, I want, to, I want you to remember these things. You're certainly stronger than you think. Everyone isn't against you. Your tribe doesn't always have to look like you. I have a tribe that is full of that diverse team that I mentioned before. So, so, so important. You yourself determine how far you go. Like I said, it's those hidden hashtags. Some of the things that I put on myself as insecurities weren't true. Those were just untruths I told myself. Comparison is the thief of joy. Give yourself a break from social media. Again, real versus real. Some of this stuff is not real. And be kind to yourself. Speak to yourself as kindly as you would a stranger. There are certain things that you would never say to a stranger that you say to yourself. 
On the right, that is my tribe, my daughter and family. I'm super thrilled that my daughter has seen more facets of STEM than I could ever think of. I, I cannot wait to see what she becomes. I hope when she runs into you all as future engineers, that you will be as kind to her as others have been kind to me. And I encourage you all to just remember what the late Maya Angelou said, all great achievements require time. So if you're struggling, if you like, oh my God, it's gonna take forever, give it, give it some time. So with that, I will close. I thank you all for your questions, participation. And if there are any questions, I will pause if I have time for a few. But otherwise, thank you so much for your time today. Oh my gosh, Dr. Cat, it was just so fa fantastic hearing your message and I want to share it with everyone. We do have another question in chat. Um, and uh, the question is, um, shouldn't be, instead of hiring who look like us or trying to hire people who look different than us, shouldn't we focus on hiring those who are most suitable so that those jobs or areas make the best possible outcome? for what is needed to be done, similar to a previous question. Yes, and I think that there are um, things that we're working on. So I think blind applications is one thing in that area. But I, I would say for the person that um, submitted that statement, and, and, I, and I love the line of thought, I, I love the line of thought because I, I don't want them to assume that I'm saying, hey, we went wrong, we hired everyone that looked like one person and oh, now go hire everyone that looks differently. I'm saying when we look at the, the landscape, there aren't a lot of people that look differently. So I'm encouraging the people that don't to apply to say there's a, a place for them because the statistics show if 60% have left once they came in, we don't have a lot of people that are staying within the profession and we need them there to make decisions that are specifically unique to what um, we need for them. Um, there are known unconscious biases. That's why I think every organization I have been a part of has had to take some type of training to, to understand that. But there is also the notion of the entire applicant pool is not as depth is as, as, as deep as it needs to be. Where I'm trying to advocate and shamelessly rally is to get more people in that applicant pool. So we know that over the next 10 years, women are the majority group, right? So there are different strategies and things that all consumer bases are like, oh, let's go target women. No one's saying anything negative about that. I'm just saying if you're targeting and you're making products for us and we're having buying power, make sure we're at the table to make products that are suitable for us and come from different lenses outside of the textbook. It's more than just the theoretical expertise, the lived experience is very important and that varies by demographic. Thank you, Dr. Kat. Again, um, it is wonderful to have you join us on this um, Young Women in Technology um, event and uh, look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Pooja, did you want to go over the, um, the, yes, very good. Yeah. So thanks again, Dr. Kara, that was a wonderful keynote. And I hope kids have got a different perspective what it means to work and collaborate with different and uh, diverse people to you know, develop different products. And as Dr. Kat explained to us, there are a lot of different things that you need to take when you're developing a product that fits diverse needs. With that in mind, our team has put together the different uh, workshops. So as you can see, we have two uh, agendas up here. But as we explained again, um, it's the same content that we're presenting on each, the, each of the days. 
the main reason we have two is that you know given the time zone difference we want to have september 29th for people that are in east coast and september 30th for the kids that are joining us from west coast if you are more than you're more than welcome to join the session on 29th and on 30th if you missed or if you want are more interested to listen to other sessions that you did not get a chance on 29th it's once you register you have access to both okay so as you see we have three different tracks track 1 track 2 and track 3 each of the tracks have different sessions the sessions with respect to welcome key opening keynote and closing keynote is the same across the three different tracks. So let's begin with say track two, right? And if you go there and say, you know, uh, you're interested in virtual escape room. All of you would have received a webinar link, which was sent to the email that you registered with. You're looking for virtual escape room for day one. And this one starts at 11.35. So at 11.35 to 12.30 is the virtual escape room track two. Yes, that's the same information that you're interested in. Go down there and copy and paste the webinar link that is shared with you guys into the browser that you have. It should work across all the different browsers. Copy and paste it. And once you join that, the host will let you in. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email us at ngywitquestions at medapp.com or feel free to uh, chat with us on the Zoom webinar link. Any questions before we uh, take a break and join at 10.45 for the first session? I'll wait for another two seconds before we close this webinar link and we take a break and join at 10.45. Okay, and again, if you did not receive the webinar link, please let us know. The email is ng bit questions and adapt.com. The email is also present on our YWIT website, and this is the website that you need to log on to to get the details. Thanks everyone for joining for the keynote. We'll see you shortly at the different sessions, and then we have an interesting closing keynote that we are have it at 4 or 5. See you all soon. Bye.